so hello everyone in today's class we'll derive the element stiffness matrix for beam element so in the last class we have derived the shape functions for beam element in terms of natural coordinates and in terms of global coordinates in terms of natural coordinates if you derive them we call them as hermite shape functions so we can use either uh, global coordinate shape functions or uh, natural coordinate shape functions in order to derive the stiffness matrix for beam element as we all know so beam element has how many degrees of freedom per node? Two degrees of freedom, two degrees of freedom per node. So for a single element, so total the total there are four degrees of freedom. So from this, we'll come to know that so our stiffness matrix, element stiffness matrix for beam element should be of four cross four matrix, four cross four matrix. Now let us consider a beam. Subjected to bending moment M, length of element BLE. Okay, if you are considering uh, the global coordinates when you apply the limits after integ when you are integrating it. So the limits when you are using global coordinates will be zero to LE, but when you are using natural coordinates, it will be plus one to minus one. Okay, xi will vary from plus one to minus one. Let dx be the small element in the beam and day be the cross-sectional area of a beam. So in general, uh, strain energy stored in a beam is given by half integration with respect to volume sigma into epsilon. Let me call this as expression 1. Now our aim is to find what is sigma, what is strain for a beam. So strain for beam in y direction is given by epsilon equal to minus y d square v by dx square where v is nothing but transverse displacement. We know there are two degrees of freedom. One is transverse displacement and slope theta. Okay? Degrees of freedom per node. So v is nothing but transverse displacement. So this is the strain in y direction for a beam. So how did you get this? strain as minus y d square by v by dx square. So we know the bending moment equation for beam is given by minus ei d square y by dx square. So rearranging this, taking this uh, i on this side, so we'll get uh, this expression from bending moment uh, equation. We know m by i equal to sigma by y. So substituting in place of m by i, sigma by y, we will get this expression. So don't get confused between this y and this y here. So here, this y is nothing but your transverse displacement v. And this y is farthest distance from neutral axis. Okay? We denote it as y or c. Okay? Now, taking y on this side and e on this side, so this is what you get. So from Hooke's law, we know strain is directly proportional to strain. So strain is given by sigma by e. Okay, is it? So this sigma by e is nothing but minus y d square v by dx square. That is what is the strain in y direction for beam. Okay. If I take this e on this side, so that is nothing but your stress in the element for a beam. Let me call this as equation A and this is equation B. So when you substitute these two equations in equation one, this is what you get. Okay. Now, and the limits, since we have dx here, so with respect to dx, what are the limits? Zero to LE. Okay. So dv is given by dA into dx, which is nothing but uh, volume of an element. Okay. So which will be dv. So y square integration of y square into dA is nothing but your moment of inertia r. So this is your strain energy for a beam element. This is nothing but the strain energy of a beam element. So let me call this as equation B. Now our interest is to find out what is this d square v by dx square. Now in order to find this, we know from our previous derivation v equal to your displacement v equal to n into q. 
where n is the shear function matrix and q is the displacement matrix. When you differentiate this equation with respect to x twice, this is what you get b into q. So where b is called as strain displacement matrix. Similarly, we had a strain displacement matrix for a, a 1D bar element, which is nothing but 1 upon Le minus 1, 1. These equations we have used it uh, while solving the problems as well. Okay. We'll see what exactly is B in the next slide. Okay. Now substitute this d square v by dx square in this equation. So substitute here. So this is you get this is what you get here. So when you split this b b into q whole square, we know this b and q are in terms of matrix. We cannot write b into b q into q. Okay. So you are, we are violating the matrix property. Okay. So if A and B are two matrices, if we take the square of those two matrices, it will be written as B transpose A transpose A into B. Then only A into B whole square will be equal to this term. So writing it, applying this condition, so this will be equal to Q transpose B transpose B into Q. And remaining terms, we're writing it as it is. Let me call this as equation 3. Okay. So next, strain energy stored for general 1D element is given by. So for general strain energy equation, we know it as a half of kx square. If I take x as q and write it in matrix form, this is how you write it. We have already used this expression in the previous derivations. So half q transpose k into q. Let me call this equation 4. So when you compare these two equations, equation 3 and equation 4. When you compare that, you get k as integration of ei, integration of 0 to le, b transpose into b into dx, where k is nothing but your stiffness matrix. We are interested in obtaining the expression for this. Okay, So this is what you get. k equal to ei, integration 0 to le, b transpose into b into dx. Let me call this as equation 5. We can directly use global coordinate shape functions and for B and B transpose, then obtain the expression for stiffness matrix K. So, but using those terms, it will become tedious. So, in order to make the simplification easier, we'll use natural coordinate shape functions, that is hermit shape functions. So, we'll convert this dx in terms of dz, and when you convert this from global coordinate to natural coordinate, so the limits will change from 0 to Le to minus 1 to plus 1. Okay. So we know from relationship between natural coordinate and global coordinate, we have dx equal to Le by 2 dz. When you substitute this here, this is what the expression you will be getting. Ei integration minus 1 to plus 1, b transpose b, Le by 2 into d zeta. D, sorry, not d zeta, it is dz. Okay. So rearranging it, let me take 2 on this side and Le, uh, Le is here. Now, this is what is B. Okay? Here in the previous case, I told you, I have not told you what is B. So when you differentiate this term, this is what you get. Okay? B as. Okay? So it is nothing but dou square n by dou x square. Okay? But what is n? It is n1, n2, n2, n3 and n4. Okay? So this is in terms of global coordinates. This is your strain displacement matrix for beam element in terms of global coordinates. We have to convert this in terms of natural coordinates and this is the expression you will get. So first we will see what are n1, n2 and n3 and n4 which you have derived. So this is your n1 which is equal to h1. This is your n2 which is equal to Le by 2 h2. Okay, And this is your n3. This is n4 which is equal to Le by 2 h4. So differentiating each of these terms, okay? so before differentiating each of these terms with respect to xi, we have to convert this first in terms of d xi. Again we will apply chain rule dou n upon dou x equal to dou n upon dou xi into dou xi upon dou x. So from this relation we can write dou xi upon dou x as 2 by Le. So what we again squaring this term now so this is, this is what you get, dou square n by dou x square as 
डाउ स्क्वायर एन बाय डाउ जाइ स्क्वायर इनटू फोर एल स्क्वायर सो फोर एल स्क्वायर विल बी देयर इन ईच ऑफ दिस टर्म्स ईच ऑफ दिस टर्म्स विल बी फोर एल स्क्वायर सो व्हेन यू टेक फोर एल स्क्वायर कॉमन आउटसाइड सो दिस इज व्हाट इट रिमेंस डाउ स्क्वायर एन वन अपॉन डाउ जाइ स्क्वायर डाउ स्क्वायर एन टू अपॉन डाउ जाइ स्क्वायर डाउ स्क्वायर एन थ्री अपॉन डाउ जाइ स्क्वायर एंड डाउ स्क्वायर एन फोर अपॉन डाउ साइ स्क्वायर okay let me call this the equation 7 now we have to obtain the values for these by differentiating twice these each of n1 n2 n3 and n4 terms so individually one by one we have to do it so this is the expression n1 what is n1 here this is n1 okay so when you integrate differentiate it with respect to xi once you'll get this okay how 1 by 4 as it is differentiation of 2 is 0 then minus 3 xi it is minus 3 then 3 xi square again differentiate differentiate this with respect to xi you will get 6 xi by 4 yes dou square n1 by dou xi square then similarly you do it for dou square n2 by dou xi square this is n2 differentiate it once you will get this term when you differentiate it again this is what you get okay so taking two out common this is what you get L e by four minus one plus three xi. Okay. Then next is dou square n three by dou xi square. So this is your n three. So differentiate it once, you'll be getting this. When you differentiate it twice, this is what you get. Minus six xi by four. Similarly, you do it for n four. Uh, this is the expression what you'll be getting. Now substitute all those. In this expression now, equation seven. Hmm? When you substitute them in all those equations, this is uh, your strain displacement matrix for beam element. Now, when you see this equation, we want B transpose as well. We got B. Now, what is B transpose? Okay, this is your B, right? I've taken four common here, and this is the expression for B. When you take B transpose. This is B transpose. Next, we have to multiply B transpose into B. So multiply B transpose into B. Don't forget to write one upon L square. Okay. So one upon L square six i L e minus one plus three i minus six i L e one plus three i. And same will be here. Okay. This is your B transpose. This is your B. So go on multiplying this. We multiply this with respect to each of the Term in this matrix, you'll be getting first row. This again with these all, you'll be getting second row. And this with this, each of the term, you'll be getting third row. And lastly, this with this, you'll be getting. This. And here outside, one upon L raised to four. Make sure you multiply it carefully. You can see here. I'll just uh, tell one or two. Six into six, six uh, i into six i, thirty six i square. Then six i into this one, that is six i l e minus one plus three i. This into this minus thirty six i square. And this into this six i one plus three i. I'll tell you these terms. So this will be this multiplied by this one. So l e square, that is l e square. Then uh, So both the terms are same. That is minus one plus three xi whole square. Okay, and I'll tell you what is this term. That is this multiplied by this one. So you can see here it is a plus a minus b. It is a plus b, where a is three xi and b is minus one. So when a, a plus b, a minus b is nothing but a square minus b square. That is what is applied here. Okay. So 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 on, go on multiplying this, and this is what the matrix will be getting, which is nothing but four cross four matrix. Now our duty will not get over here. This is not the stiffness matrix of beam. So this is actually the stiffness matrix. So we have just got B transpose into B. Now our next step is to integrate each of these terms in the matrix. To make the integration simple, okay. So integrating all these sixteen terms in the matrix becomes tedious. Okay, so in order to make the 
integration simple there will be three terms okay there will be three integrations only so integration of 1 into d xi the integration of xi d xi the integration of xi d square okay from limits plus 1 to minus 1 so when you multiply these terms you can see only xi square xi term and a constant term so integration of constant xi and xi square okay if you integrate those it's more than enough so when you integrate constant term so this is what you'll be getting if you integrate 1 d xi with respect to limits xi if you apply the limits minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 here it will be 2 okay then when you integrate xi d xi so when you integrate xi xi square by 2 when you apply the limits half half so it will become 0 okay and when you integrate xi square it will be xi cube by 3 when you apply the limits 1 by 3 minus minus 1 by 3 it will be 2 by 3 okay 2 by 3 now the integration of whole uh, this one when you integrate it so before integrating I have just uh, split the terms which are in brackets I have factorized it so I multiplied each of these terms inside here so this is the expression you will be getting so 36 xi square minus 36 6 36 xi 6 e sorry minus 6 xi le plus 18 xi square le so go on multiplying this and write the terms so you can see 36 xi square when you multiply here minus 6 xi le plus 18 xi square le okay you can see here go on multiplying and write the terms now in place of wherever you have xi square you substitute 2 by 3 wherever you have xi you substitute 0 wherever you have constant term like here you substitute 2 substitute 2 when you do this you can see here each of the terms is there wherever you have xi square here so here there is xi square here there is xi square here there is xi square in almost all the terms you have xi square and here you have constant term that is constant here then this is xi here in place of xi it is zero i'm just telling you a few terms okay just go through all these okay? so when you substitute this when you simplify this you can see 2 by 3 36 into 2 is 72 72 by 3 is 24 so here 18 into 2 36 36 by 3 is 12 there is le so 12 le so on go by, go on doing it this is the expression for integration of minus 1 to plus 1 b transpose into b into d xi next we are interested in this k equal to ei by 2 integration b transpose b into d xi into le substitute this in this expression one le will get cancelled out you will remain with this 2 will get inside the matrix and you will be remaining with half of this matrix over here and EI as it is. So this is your stiffness matrix of beam element which will be used to solve problems. So it is very easy to remember. So EI by LE cube will be there as it was EI by EA by L in case of trusses and bars. Here it is EI. Okay. Here i is moment of inertia, e is the Young's modulus, and l is the length of the element. Ei by le cube, so 12, 6 le, minus 12, 6 le, 6 le, 4 le square, minus 6 le, 2 le square, minus 12, minus 6 le, 12, minus 6 le, 6 le, 2 le square, minus 6 le, 4 le square. Okay. Just remember these first four terms. Same thing you write it here, but instead of 4 le, you write it 2 le square here. And these two will be minus and this and this will be same this four terms and this four terms and since the stiffness matrix property it is stiffness matrix is always symmetric okay so these and this will be same and this and this are same but these two will be minus it is very easy to remember so this is the expression for stiffness matrix of beam element okay we will be using this to solve the problems Thank you.